everyone, I'm so glad you're here. Recently, we've been learning about variables and math and programming. Today, we're gonna dive a little deeper into that, and I'm gonna show you how to work with high-level formulas that have exponents in them, as well as how to format the output of your calculations so it displays in the format you need. If you're planning to follow along, pause the video now and start again once you're all set up. Let's go. We're gonna start with the formula for finding the area of a circle. Now, we have that written here, and as you can see, we're gonna to need to deal with that little exponent. So as a reminder, an exponent indicates how many times a number should be multiplied by itself. So over here, we have two to the sixth power. This is the same as writing Which one of these would we rather look at, right? So the result of either, though, no matter which way you calculate it, is going to be 64. Now, this is what we're going to be coding out. But before we do, let's solve it by hand, because it's good experience with exponents, and it gives us some test data for our program. But I just want to point out, fun little side note, see how this is already written in like programming notation? Remember with our assignment direction, this happens first, and then the result? goes into whatever we have here on the left. Love that. So for our example, I'm going to set r equal to 6. All right, excellent. So if we start to solve this out now, we know that pi is 3.14159 forever. Let's shorten that up a little bit for this example, right? Oop, 159, OK. And now we have our r squared which is going to be, as we know here, 6 times 6, which gives us 36. OK. Awesome. So then 36 times pi is 113.097456, and so on and so forth. So now this is the area of our circle. Right. Now, uh, as humans, we solve this out this way. But when we get to the computer, how are we going to handle this exponent? We definitely don't want to type this out in our code, right? Multiply, multiply, multiply. So I'm going to show you the power function. See you in just a sec. All right, guys, here I am in Visual Studio, where I've added my source file and set up my program structure. I wanted to wait for you here, because today we're going to be adding a new library to our program that we haven't worked with yet the CMath library. CMath brings in commands for advanced math functions. Today we'll be using the POW function, which is short for power, and as you can probably guess, it's a great way to handle exponents and formulas. Now we need to declare our variables. What are we going to need? To find out, let's review our formula and pick out all the pieces of information included in it. We can see here that we have three distinct pieces of information. area pi, and radius. Since we need all three of these components in our formula, we're going to need a variable for each. So first, should we make these ints or doubles? Well, pi is a decimal, so that's an easy choice. That probably also means that our result will have a decimal in it, so we're two for three on doubles now. In our example, radius is six, which, while that is a nice round digit, what if someday it wasn't? So I think to be safe, let's go ahead and make our variables doubles. Now, if you're wondering why I stopped and didn't include pi here in the declaration statement, let's stop and think about the type of number that pi is, other than delicious, of course. Pi is what's known as a mathematical constant, so it's never going to change. Since it's a constant in the real world, let's go ahead and make it a constant in our program, too. Remember that const is a prefix, so we can add it in front of our data type to indicate that the value of that variable is unchanging. Also, because it's a constant, we have to follow the constant naming convention, which is all capital letters with words being separated using an underscore. Okay, great. So all of our variables are declared, and because one of them is a constant, it's also been initialized with a value. 
We could initialize radius to 6 because that's what we have in our example, but what if instead we let the user initialize it? So let's go ahead and set up a C out C in combo here. This will ask the user to give us the radius of their circle, and that value is going to be stored in our radius variable. Now the fun part, building out our formula. We've actually got a nice head start since the assignment direction in the original formula is already correct. So that's area equals numpy times, and now here's where we get to our exponents. We discussed earlier that an exponent is just multiplying a number by itself over and over. And before the CMath library, that's how we would have written it out. But you can imagine that if something was to like the 10th power, let's say, I mean, that would have sucked if type out, right? We'd have to type this out like 10 more times. So instead of this approach, we're going to use the pow function. Now notice here that I said function and not command. And that's because there is a difference between the two. A function is always followed by a pair of parentheses, where a command like C out isn't necessarily. So what this means is that if you were just looking at this here by itself, you can immediately tell it's a function because of the parentheses. Without getting too deep into it at this stage, the basic definition of a function is that it's a chunk of code that we can pass data to for calculations, and then we get results returned to us. Now, functions aren't always data crunching, but in the case of our pow function, it is. So the last step here is to tell our function what data we want to send. Now, with all functions, the data that you want to send to it goes here within the parentheses. Whatever you put in here is referred to as arguments or parameters, and we separate what we're sending with commas. The power function requires that we send two parameters. The first is the base number. For our formula, that's going to be r, or our variable radius. So we'll go ahead and put that here. And then a comma to separate it from the second argument, which is the power that we want to apply to our base number. Since radius is raised to the second power in our formula, we're going to put 2 here. So we're sending the value of radius as the base number, and 2 is the power that we're going to raise radius to. So now that our formula is written, we're ready to tell the user the area of their circle by printing it to the console. So let's give them a nice C out statement. If you're wondering what this backslash n here is, this is a new line character. Back in our C in, C out series, we learned that the new line character represents the keystroke of pressing enter. So what do you think it does here? Well, it's going to put this on a new line. It's basically the same thing as using end line here, but we can use it within the C out statement rather than it needing to be a separate command. Pretty nifty, right? A surprise little Easter egg of learning. OK, let's run this baby. OK, let's go ahead and start with our test data that had a radius of 6, and that way we can tell if our formula on the back end is working as intended. All right, heck yes. Perfect. So that is the calculation, but we're actually missing a little bit of data. So we calculated the area of our circle to be 113.097456. So where is the rest of it? Well. Luckily, we can manipulate how many decimals a value will show using the set precision function. So let's close our console and get back to our code. In order to use the set precision function, we first have to add the IO manip library to our program. So let's go ahead and do that up here. Now, IO manip is short for input output manipulation. So this library includes functions that allow us to manipulate the output. And in our case, we want to manipulate how many decimal places a value is displaying when it prints to the console. OK, and now we can call our setPrecision function. 
And again, we know this is a function because we have these parentheses here. And that also means that we could put in a parameter. So in the case of set precision, we're going to put in the number of decimal places that we want our display to print out to. Or if we weren't using the fixed version, it would represent the digits of the whole number that would be able to be printed. So for example, if we were working in monetary values, so representing money, we would put two in here because typically when you work with dollar values, it only extends out to those two cent places, right? But for us, we want something precise, so let's go ahead and put six in here. So this will print out up to six decimal places. Let's see if this does the trick. Awesome. Perfect. Much better. So there we go. So you can see that we went from printing out just three places to now six. Great work, everybody. Thanks for watching, everyone. I encourage you to play around in your program and try passing different arguments to the power function. See if you can get 20 decimals to display for a value. Try removing the fixed from your set precision and see what happens. Math is something that we all struggle with from time to time, but I hope that this video helped you feel more confident using math and programming. And remember, the world needs your ideas. Go get it. <laughs>